Welcome back, Nerd Funnelers. We're here uh, funneling all the nerd news of the world into your more than willing ear holes. I'm Bob Shway, and with me tonight is Juan. Chickity check yourself. And Ivan. I am mad. And Fong. Sup, bitches. Yo, so uh, we have ju- we're just fresh out of seeing uh, Suicide Squad. We're doing a little bit of a mobile cast tonight in different venues, so we're, our, our sound's a little different tonight. Um, but uh, this movie made me want to commit suicide. Whoa! This, yeah, that's, that's, a that's, a, that's, that's a pretty. That's a pretty. Uh, it's a pretty an, strong, a, a str- strong statement. Strong, strongly worded, but but uh, accurate nonetheless. Um, so the uh, the Suicide Squad had a lot of problems, like before it even was in the theater, right? I mean, there was a lot of people yeah. saying that oh, the trailer is really bad, and that. The Rotten Tomato score. There's that the whole thing about Rotten Tomatoes. Did you guys read about that? No. Yeah, I heard there were people like <laughs> trying to. There, there's a petition going on saying that like, oh, the score isn't accurate because of whatever. Because what the, was its score? It was like 27 or 23. Yeah. Let's see here. Yeah, I'll, I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, no, so there was a whole bunch of controversy over the Suicide Squad movie before it came out. I mean, most people were like kind of confused by the trailer because right. it was like kind of all over the place, which. In, 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 in fairness, um, yeah, it was uh, kind of all over the place. We'll get to that. Um, yeah. So, uh, Ivan, uh, Juan, and I have seen it. Yes, I have not because my car decided, or Ryan's car, my fiance, decided to spare me the trouble by don't, overheating. Don't tell them that you're taken. We still need to draw in viewers <laughs> and, and listeners. Keep the dream alive, Paul. Right, Keep the dream alive. Um, I still wish that my car had crapped out <laughs> as to avoid okay, having watched whatever. this movie. My side piece's car overheated <laughs> three times on the way to the movie theater. Wow. Um, it's got 26% on, on Rotten Tomatoes. I imagine, and that's just plummeting You know still. what? I, I want to start a petition to okay. get that score even lower. <laughs> <laughs> Do, how, did we like it better than BVS? So the uh, the uh, uh, did I like this better than Batman? No, very similar. Not not the uh, Ultimate Edition. The, I oh, I haven't seen that. The yet. Ultimate Is Edition it any good? So yeah, um, actually, it came out uh, last week, and I I bought it actually. Oh. And okay. um, actually, on Steven's recommendation. He can be here tonight, oh, but that's um, right. That's right. He did say that it was. He good. said it was way better, and it is. It's way better with the added stuff in there because it <laughs> like, actually did they edit it down? Did no, they, they added like, stuff in. So they added the things in that got taken out that made the movie make sense. And I'm wondering if that's going to be the same thing with Suicide Squad because it looks like there were chunks and chunks just there were lots of edited out. out. Actually, Jared Le- Jared Leto uh, was qu- uh, quoted as saying, and Will Smith too, that there was a lot of uh, Joker parts that got cut out. Oh, um, there were more Batman parts that got cut out. Um, there was a lot more kind of filling out of the story that got cut out because the movie his runtime was like two and a half hours, oh, right? And it was wow. still like it was still rushed, because right? And, and the beginning, the, at the beginning of the movie, how they're introducing you to some of the characters, to like three of them, right? They basically introduce you to like three characters or four characters, when in reality there's like five or six, yeah. And it it, it didn't make sense that they're they spent time introdu- introducing you with some of these characters, but then felt it it was completely okay to throw in like characters like halfway through the fucking movie with like uh, Katana. It's like, where did she come from? Like nowhere. She no. came from and, nowhere. And she, well, well, she basically had no role whatsoever. No, she was other there, than like being sexy as fuck. She was yes. there to be sexy, but more, more, more. If more, that when she had her ugly crying face. More than more more so to be like Asian like it, this movie was really racist to me. Yeah, it was really racist. When Croc, Killer Croc, was like, "I need my BET." Yeah, my BET, and, he and they like, had the vato. Wow. Yeah, they had they had the homie there. They had the, they had the Mexican. They had the, the it was like everybody was a token something. Even there was even a token white guy. There was the Australian Will, bruiser. Will Smith was like a huge black stereotype. Well, and, well was Will, he? Will, Will, Will he Smith totally was. He wow. was saying a lot of blacky blacky things like black. Uh, not blacky. Not my sense. Like but, nobody had a fleshed out character. No. Well, well like, I mean, they they tried with, with they try with Harley and with Deadshot yeah. and with um, and they try to shoehorn these like emotional moments and they just don't hit. Yeah. They yeah. miss with them more completely. You know, there, there was was totally like it was all sorts of. This movie was a t- like ten different movies trying to be one thing and it didn't. It failed. Like it was trying to be Expendables. It was trying to be um, a DC movie. It was trying to be. A, uh, a like a gritty hero movie. Yeah, it was trying to be uh, like 
a it was trying to take a lot of tropes from Batman like uh-huh. uh, like it was trying to be the gritty noir Batman it was trying to be the you know those, those kid toys where like there's like a square and a triangle and a circle and they have a piece that like fits specifically to that spot yeah it seemed like they were trying to squeeze in like the square into the circle piece and they were just smashing it like like <laughs> we'll make this work we'll make this work and in the end it's like no it it fell short. This was like the most expensive fanfic I've ever seen. It, it cost like over three hundred million to make and market. Yeah, like what? The, didn't the whole thing wow. feel like a fan fiction to you? Yeah, it was just it was like oh let's take every let's take everybody that we like and shove them all in the movie and then uh, try I to wouldn't make, do that to make I like. a make I wouldn't a do story. That to I like. Make a story around right? it. Yeah, <laughs> like did it then like also bleed into deviant art? We're like Harley's like oh, absolutely, also, like, absolutely. Also, absolutely. also actually absolutely. part there was Fox or Cheetah or something. There were so many t- parts where they were trying to like create slash fiction. I felt like between um oh my gosh between the Joker and the, the that prison guard. Oh my god, yeah. And I was like, okay, well he's. Can we get a real quick barometer reading on the Joker because he did not feel right at all. He just felt like oh, uh, actually, like a like a Cuban. No, not like a Cuban. Like a uh, like a. I don't I, know. What was that? Like he felt like a, a a drug dealer essentially. I was I was talking to this guy in the bathroom in the after bathroom. the movie, uh-huh. and we were t- we were t- like me and Juan were talking about the Joker. I'm like, what do you think? And I'm like, I said, well, he kind of feels like they took uh, that Jared Leto w- was trying to. Like do something new, and instead he ma- mashed up ha- Heath Ledger, Jack Nicholson, and Cesar Romero from the old old Batman '60s thing, I see. and then put like a gangster veneer over it, and yeah. none of it worked. Well, for me, this was my problem, and I had my reservations, like I was telling you in the car, that like, like he said he prepared for the role by watching a lot of visceral real life violence because the Joker is desensitized to violence so I'm going to desensitize myself to violence but it's like that's not all the Joker is right Right. it's it's part of the like what makes the Joker the Joker is that he has like such a deep understanding of like human nature and how people are going to react to specific things yeah and then he does things that he thinks are quote unquote funny to him yeah um he uh he seemed to be uh like like I don't know if this is going to make any sense but he seemed to be like a, a caricature of the Joker. No, for sure, for sure. Like it was the Joker, but played up. Like he was forcing that laugh. His he, laugh. He, he had like a, growl. like a like a growl, kind of a like a growl laugh that like made no sense like anywhere in the movie. Um, it 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 had the feeling of the old Batman with like the pow, the crack, bam, bam. like, like it was. So it, there's the Cesar Rivera aspect. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's, that's the part it I was, was referring yeah, to. Yeah, it really takes you out of the moment. Yeah, it, it, his it was, performance. It really he, his, his presence in the movie seemed like it didn't need to be. There's, there's a whole bunch that didn't need Once to be again, in there. Once again, it's like uh, it seemed like an unnecessary character like was placed just for the sake of placing the character in there. Yeah, there was no actual development with the character whatsoever, <laughs> and it might have been an issue with how many characters they tried to squeeze into just a single like movie yeah. as opposed to breaking them up possibly and doing like individual things where you can develop an attachment to the character before just seeing them like you know mashed up together in this yeah like scenario that just makes no sense yeah and like i he, i thought his role i mean we will never know what the un the edited out parts will look like, but yeah. I would have thought he was going to like come in and just sort of like usurp the team by becoming like the mastermind behind it. Oh, the mastermind of the, the Suicide Squad. Yeah, they mm-hmm. it, they kind of like hint to it when you know he's he has his machinations in play and he ha- he gets uh, the guard to hand off the phone to Harley Quinn and mm-hmm. um, and like when he he's like constantly coming after her. I thought it was going to be more of like. But I guess that would just introduce a whole nother genre into that I film actually that like, it didn't need, I like, actually, a fucking heist. I actually mm. like that character to play the guard more than, than the Anybody Joker. Anybody else? More than, than, more more than, than the Joker. Joker. Yeah. Yeah. A, lo- a lot of, the, a lot of the, the bit players did a really good job. Um, oh, okay. So, uh, like, the, uh, the, I think the best, okay. Well, let's see, even in trying to, like, dissect and attempt to break down this movie, we're all over the place because this movie is all over the place. We don't exactly. know where to, there's, there's no through line. We don't know where to thread ourselves. So yeah. why don't we start at, at the beginning with these introductions of these characters, right? So from the very get-go, it's just like, oh, uh, it's like um, this – it's a, a very Quentin Tarantino. It's like 
stylistic flashes of the characters doing their thing, right? Yeah. And it has like the, their names and the, their stats and uh, on text on screen and what they're good at right. and all that stuff. And then we we flash from a uh, we flash from Deadshot to Harley Quinn to um, Killer Croc, Killer Croc to, to Boomerang. Boomerang to all these guys that you know have th- their rap sheets and what they're in, you know their their histories and stuff like that. And then uh, Amanda Waller is discussing this with Rick Flag, who's basically the Nick Fury of right. of uh, DC the DC world. You mean you mean more than. Batman is in the coming Justice League movie. It's basically, yeah, basically, it's the he's he's the Nick Fury for the bad guys. Because we're bad guys. Um, we're starting a Suicide Squad initiative. <laughs> we're suicide. What do they call it, like Group X or whatever? <laughs> oh yeah, like Team X, what? Team, Team X, X or whatever. Um, so then, uh, I guess the uh, the premise of the movie is that uh, the Enchantress, one of the the bad people, the, yeah. the, the and the most powerful, I guess. Uh, uh, goes rogue and uh, it, she's going to be recruited and then she uh, escapes uh, for some fans, through some fanciful magic doings and gets control of the leverage they have over her uh-huh. and frees her brother and then her and her brother are going to build a machine that's going to destroy the world because they don't already have the mad like I didn't get I didn't get, I didn't understand the way the way the, the way that the plot line follows is that the Nick Fury the what's her name. Uh, the the uh, the, man, the enchantress yeah yeah the one that gets all the characters together oh Her, the man Amanda Waller. Waller. yeah Amanda she's Waller. she's she's getting all these like all these uh, uh, meta humans together for like an impending like World War Three kind of a scenario where their powers are going to come into play and then they themselves create the entire chaos that ensues immediately afterwards yeah which is like. Hey, we're just gonna randomly create our own like issues. There's no like uh-huh. exterior anything that's coming in that's causing the problem. Well, I, like we're just gonna like, make it happen. You know, I think that her problem was with the beginning. She said Superman's gone. That's their problem. Not Superman is their problem. And they're like we I need see. a team to respond to threats or whatever. And I'm just like, well, you could like. It. It's not like you're without. Like yeah. superheroes. So already. apparently, like fuck Batman and Aquaman and all these people. Like, so, like, do you think they're, like, somewhere just, like, brooding, just very offended? Like, Well, at the very... Apparently so. The, 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 the stinger at the end answered that question. Uh-huh. Um, well, uh, the Flash is that they show in the movie. The Flash is the one that uh, captures... Which, which one was it? Boomerang. Boomerang. Okay. And brings him in. He's very... He's in there for a Flash, just a brief uh, instance. It, it <laughs> um, seems to me, though, that her... It, 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 it's absolutely her fault. For the entire thing. Right. Yeah. And like by capturing and controlling a eons old uh, uh, magic user oh, that yeah. that you're you asking literally have no idea how powerful she is. Yeah. And you're just kind of banking on the fact that, you know, she's not smarter than you. Yeah. Is it seems like very, very short sighted. Which is dumb because if she's an interdimensional being, you can probably bet she's got way more years of experience. Oh, absolutely. Intelligence than you do. And she's, ha- yeah, she's how old? Like, like 6,300 years? It's like 6,000 years, she said, yeah. on the, like, the little stat yeah. readout thing. And then um, Batman is actually the one that brings Harley in. Oh. Um, yeah. he, uh, he, the, he's that his, appear- his main appearance in the film is uh, capturing Harley. Capturing, uh, Harley. Uh, the Batman or Joker in this in this now in this DC universe now they have uh, is he's kind of like the kind of like the uh, he he reminds me of like a um, a Ziggy Stardust uh, pop glam <laughs> grunge no, warlord it's absolutely that owns accurate, Gotham yeah. City already and he's got like gold and bling and jewels and he's got these high high, high rolling clubs and all these subordinates and stuff like that yeah and it, I, it I was boggles expect- me that Batman can't take that down. Yeah, and then so then they're in a Lamborghini driving around, joyriding. He's literally with, very accessible with Harley, and then Batman just jumps down the Lamborghini out of his Batmobile and and causes him to crash. And then the Joker escapes, but he pulls Harley out, and then they lock her up. And Harley's Harley's uh, how she kind of fell in love with the Joker as being like her his caretaker in uh-huh. Arkham. Right. That was kind of a very kind of joltedly done. Like I didn't feel oh, like the, the through line it was just like. Oh, she is the doctor now. All of a sudden, she's in love with him. Like there was no romance build up. Like they need their own movie together. Honestly. Right. Once yeah. again, they, they they just put too many they put too many characters like in 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 one situation that was made up 
by the characters themselves. There was no exterior, like, anybody coming in and causing the issue. Like, they just... just, I mean... They made the issue happen. Yeah. Right, but I mean, like, look at uh, Batman the Animated Series. They told the story of Mad Love in, what, 22 minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Like, they did such a great job. But then again, you only have, like, three minutes or less to do it in this movie. Like, yeah, I suppose. Which is funny, they should should have had, like, they should have had them maybe come up with, like, their own movie first. If they were going to introduce these characters and are expecting to continue making uh, films with these characters moving forward, then they should have developed these characters in a much better format than just mashing them together. Going off of that point, I think... There's a perfect line in this movie that encapsulates the whole film. Okay. It's when they uh, bring Boomerang to the, like the place uh, to 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 the staging area where they get ready to go out to Midway City yeah. and take down the Enchantress. He, they they pull him out in a bag and a flag comes up and he's like, "Well, well, well, looks like twelve pounds of shit in, in a, a ten, 10 pound, pound bag. bag." And I'm like, "Bingo! This is exactly what this movie is about." Nailed it. It's like how. Does it, no one else see the irony in this? No, it's, it's funny because like right around that time too, they pulled the lot that like uh, Will Smith's like so oh we're uh, we're some sort of Suicide Squad. So it's like they, oh right they, they oh, pulled the title yeah. of the movie it, like right next to the actual theme of the movie, even though they didn't mean to. It was perfect, and they didn't even know they were doing it. You're right, Ivan. That's awesome. It's, it was it was it's laughable. And Rick Flag is just kind of a morose like barky uh, exactly. soldier. Very very stere- there's so many stereotypes and so many racist stereotypes. Yeah. Um, so, uh, we've got, um, Killer Croc, who's, yeah, just a black guy. And did you find it offensive that, like, the, the black guy is the one who's the ugly, big bruiser dude? And then they've got... Who's this... muscular and just, like... Yeah, they, they paint him up very stereotypically. And then you've yeah. got the Asian shows up and he's quiet and only speaks Japanese for, uh, most of the time. And, uh... Says nothing, does nothing except chop with katanas. And then she had like has no has character one scene arc. where she has like an ugly crying face, and we're supposed to feel something for yeah, that. Yeah, there's there was no reason for it to be there. She's like a, a, a nothing character, and that lessens it. And then you've got um, the boomerang guy, who's basically a comic relief for a movie that didn't need. Whose own, whose own fallacy was its comic relief? Because yeah. his own problems were comic relief. And I wonder if that's 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 probably studio interference, from what I understand of what I've been reading. Oh yeah, is that they wanted it? They had a much darker cut. I don't know how it could be darker or, and be entertaining in this case, but yeah. studio said that we want to have it to have that same sort of feel, the one that that uh, when the trailer came out. So they had to do reshoots and re-editing. In order mm-hmm. to fit that tone, and uh, it, and the, what tone? I'm trying to think of what the tone of this movie is. I don't know what the tone <laughs> is. We were just talking about it. It's too for, it's, stumbling from set piece to set it's, piece. It's schizophrenic. It's yeah. like a, it's like a frazzled, discombobulated. This is, this is the type of movie that the Joker would make. Yeah, seriously, it's like if the Joker made. You're right. If he made the. If I'm gonna movie. have a movie, it's gonna be multiple choice. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! They exactly. try to. They try to include comic relief points throughout the film uh-huh. and they none of them were on point none of them were really deserving on it and you know it goes back to the point you're trying to make which is you can't determine what the feel of the the, the movie was supposed to be like is it supposed to be dark is it supposed <laughs> to be like cartoony yeah it's supposed to be a little bit funny and it misses the mark on all of them. And it feels it feels out of place within even the DC universe they're actively trying to create now. Like this yeah. movie doesn't need to be. Yep. It doesn't need to exist. They should have got they should have gone straight to doing Flash or Aquaman or right. oh. one of them like like and we know what kind of movies those are t- going to be kind of be and what those characters are going to play up as but like why do these characters even need to be around for right now? <laughs> and that's a that's a huge shame cuz like the Suicide Squad comic series is actually really good. It's amazing. And it- they, and I don't want people to be turned off to reading it because this movie sucks so hard. But they can take the time there to flesh out all the characters. Like this is just a whole, again like shoehorning, and it's and it's it, they what but, Suicide Squad should have been a TV show. That's what they should have done. Yeah, I mean yes, That's but also done. like if you get a good enough director and good enough writers, there is a way well, they, to they, c- like kind of make a nod to like certain things about the characters without having to have like a 20 minute vignette for each one. And right, but like they could have taken like a similar approach as uh, that Marvel did with 
the Avenger characters and introducing them like all separately. And I mean, there's all there's like Iron Man two and Iron Man three were just atrocious films, but like the first one was great and it was oh, a great yeah. introduction into Iron Man. Uh, Thor, I, like Thor, like same thing. Like there's been. I hated Thor the first one, but go uh, on. Yeah, <laughs> um, they 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 introduced us to the characters and allowed us to like enjoy the characters yes. for who they were before they decided to just put them all together. I don't, I don't like, think they, that they, they couldn't they put they couldn't give each character that much time within that construct of two and a half hours. Yeah, I don't think that would have been the point though, because like nobody, no, they're not going to put out movies specifically about villains and i get that and i think what they should have looked at more closely is how for example ensemble pictures don't always work but if you take a movie like say saving private ryan everybody gets their equal time on screen well they did it right in guardians of the galaxy they pulled exactly. that off and they yeah, did this excellently and they didn't have to like pack twelve pounds of shit into a ten pound bag yeah. with so much exposition. They didn't. They didn't do a little vignette for for Groot and for right, for right. Rocket Raccoon and everybody. In the you beginning. got a sense of who they were immediately. They, they did. Right. The, they did the lineup, and that was it. You do a good characterization. In oh, by the way, you you saw, probably saw me roll my eyes so many times yeah. that, they, <laughs> that they tried to pack these really clunky lines full of exposition mm-hmm. into like Amanda Waller. Well, the, the the something like uh, our, the point of this is to take care of things that we haven't thought of yet in to, to avert yeah. World War Three. And I was like, who says that in real life? Well, the 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 the, the best way to do it is to let the carrot like show the character briefly doing an action that speaks for themselves. Exactly. Like they don't need to have Amanda Waller introducing everybody like through you know looking through a file and explaining yeah. what they do and then having like flashy gun battle scenes of them doing what they do it's like just show them being who they are like they did that in uh in in Guardians of the Galaxy very well yeah. and and David Ayer he wrote and direct this uh he did like uh Training Day and End of Watch and he's a capable writer and director wow. those are good movies yeah. right um but i think that uh there was just too much the, i think there's a lot of studio interference there's too much the studios were asking yeah. them to do in this one that that uh, he kind of felt me forced to do. Yeah, um, I mean, comic book movies are hot right now, and yeah. like obviously over on the DC end, they're struggling, and Marvel's doing super well. So I think it was a matter of like building themselves well, up too much. Yeah, they're trying to play catch up, but I think in doing so, they're actually hurting their own end goals. I think if they oh, yeah, slow absolutely. things down, it's like okay, well, look, Marvel beat us to the punch with the whole like cinematic universe setup thing, right. but let's take our time and do each character do justice before we jump into uh, you know these triumphant multi uh, multi franchise unifying uh, video yeah. or uh, movies. But, like, I mean, the other problem is, like, not everyone's going to go see a Captain Boomerang movie. So no, no. That's the, that's but then, the then issue that, that, that raised the point. Does anybody, do we really need one? Right. And that's the thing. Is like, I thought, you know what, this movie would have been really good if it was Harley and Deadshot and uh, Diablo. Yeah. The, the Mexican yeah. And, guy. And Will Smith not playing Deadshot. Yeah. I mean, because it, the, through the entirety of the movie, I was, like, was I'm like, Will- I'm like, that's Will Smith. No, I that don't buy you as a character. No, you're Will Smith. That was Will Smith being Will Smith. And yeah. it, that was Will Smith. It was the same. It was almost the same as if they took uh, Agent J from Men in Black and they put him in. And or, he, had, he had a slower, like a speech and a yeah. little bit more of a tone. And, and, but, gave, and gave him a daughter to care about. Yeah. And then that was it. I see. Or it was uh, the same thing uh, that he played in iRobot and just gave him a daughter to care about and turned him loose. Like it was just. <laughs> And like there was there was rich material there for Harley and uh, Diablo and um, Will Smith to or uh, Deadshot to explore. Yeah. But because they, they had to shoehorn in like three other dudes or four other dudes, um, <coughs> there wasn't any time for them to really flesh it out. But then you don't have a, like a full Suicide Squad. Right. So. Um, in I would have been okay with Suicide even, Adjacent. Even yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Even uh, even Expendables had better characterization, I think. Did they real? I I wonder if we could have just been without any of. We didn't just have them come in cold, like we don't need any background on. No, that, that's what I was saying. It's like we no. needed we need them to uh, just show up doing what they do, right? And not have it explained to us because you showed show show don't you know don't explain do it you know yeah 
show don't tell, right? That makes better characters. And then it was a huge fallacy as they were trying to catch up so much. They felt like they needed to catch up so much and mm-hmm. explain everything. And uh, speaking of explaining, can someone explain the plot of the villain? You're only as good as you're, the these these comic movies are only as good as their best vi- their best villain, right? And they had the Joker in there, but he wasn't really a villain. He wasn't the he wasn't an acting main part. antagonist. He was just like this. Uh, he was par- he was part of Harley Quinn's development, which is is interesting, but that actually kind of overshadows the fact that the main antagonist had a plot that made or a motivation that made no sense. They're like, oh, we're gonna subjugate humanity. Okay, that's great. That's a great plan. How are you gonna do it? Well. She said that they worship uh, machines now. So I'm going to build, build a machine. I'm going to build a machine, and then they'll worship me. But Which, then I'm going to kill them. It didn't even look like a machine, right? It just seemed it's like... It's like a big magic hole yeah. with a big... I don't know what they were doing. Like, I didn't know exactly... Yeah, what was the point? It's just like shot down lightning beam? Yeah, lightning and then she bolt. was transforming them into her, like human beings into her army and then killing everybody else. It's like, well, you have to transform an army and then kill all the human beings so you just rule over an army of your own creation? She like, seemed like a... She had like a like a like an omnipotent like amount of like power. She's just like... She could do anything and everything and her brother was like yeah. close to the same and it's like wait so you're telling me that a guy that has a really good like like a dead shot uh-huh. and a chick who's a psychopath like realistically have a shot at beating these demon gods this movie would have worked way better if the villain had been scaled down to a more I mean a less superhuman right. standard like if it had been like uh, like a big uh, mo- like terrorist organization or mafia boss right, type thing, uh-huh. right, right. Where it just was, it wasn't so ridiculously like, oh, these guys it would be killed at like first. Because what that- was the deal with Diablo? By the way, like he turns into he turns this into like Mayan a- god that speaks the same language turns, as them. He turns into freaking Kotal Khan from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously, it was like a straight rip. Kotal, Kotal Khan oh versus Kotal Khan. At the very end, with the brother versus them, both kind of the similar things, and like, they never explained. Like, no, it was it was it was actually was Diablo from Diablo two versus uh, Kotal Khan from Mortal Kombat X. That's, that's what it was. <laughs> the end, and then and then uh, they they just blow him up with a bomb. Like yeah. he's he's just unlimited. You mean that's all it could have it took? Yeah, like they they just get him in place with the bomb because they couldn't get the bomb close <laughs> enough to him to because he would destroy it before it got there. So they needed all these under like non super powered you know uh-huh. villains to. Uh, well, semi superpower villains to distract this omnipotent being so they could have time enough for Killer Croc and a crew of underwater dudes to put a bomb in, underneath them in the sewer so they could blow them up. It just, and then it's like, okay, so you have this omnipotent, uh, you know, magic being that it looks like, you know, this Kotal Khan has all these, like, ridiculous, you know, appendages and magic spells. And they, they and expand, like, I mean, and stories. They the bomb. Like, they, like, it, 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 and he gets taken out by like this little bomb, and so then they, and then yeah exactly, and then they rip the 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 witch's heart out, and they're like, oh now we control you, and then um, the uh, Rick flags like, well I don't want to kill you, but um, I'm going to 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 save everybody else because uh-huh. the witch is inhabiting the girl he loves, and then he kills the he crushes the, her heart, but she's safe anyway. Like they never explain that. Yeah. I feel really like it was like a, right. a like trying to watch a kid like color within the lines, but it's like you, you hit every single line. Like this is just one giant mess. Yeah. Like you mean you, that segment <laughs> or the entire fucking movie? That, no, that, I, that, I would say it's probably like the 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 end of the movie. Like the the, the like how they summed everything all up. Like it was just like it just made no sense. No, it was uh, it was a, it was very fragmented there was so it was like fragmented all over the place i didn't know a kid made this movie where i was where and david Iyer made it or Ayer made it and i was like he's good like i had some yeah. i had a little bit of hope going in this i'll give it to this though it was better than ghostbusters i actually laughed at certain points during that's, this movie that's good ghostbusters though my that god was bad. that was an awful awful movie <laughs> but, there, that's, but there, that's a very low bar to pass <laughs> i think i think what, what what another thing that maybe some maybe can help our listeners sum up their or some of our experiences movie for our listeners is that the best i think the best scene in this movie was when they all kind of hung it up for a bit and uh-huh. uh, Go inside the bar and went inside yeah. the bar and kind of hung out with each other and kind of like started confiding in each other and, and then the uh, Diablo kind of gave his backstory and I think his was the most well acted well thought out well portrayed acting well executed executed in the uh, of backstory and acting in the movie is when he uh, told uh, confessed to them all how he accidentally killed his wife and children with his and, powers and the only one who actually had like any kind of like powers yeah no one had actual powers and he was the one that was most resident re- re- like hesitant to use them he didn't even use them for the first half of the movie he didn't want people to 
to, to die by his hands. He had given it up. Yeah. So when this movie stopped trying to be what it was trying to be, it was actually at its best. Which okay. is is the best praise I can give this movie. Which is, <laughs> which is a lesson that Hollywood probably will never learn. But it's what like, was it trying it's, to be? It's, the, it's less is more. It's less is more. When they were actually a team. When they were actually like confiding and learning about each other instead yeah. of just trying to like be, you know, like... Sh- to shoot things and blow things up and move the plot forward. And I gotta say that this this movie was missing the everything that a good team movie has, and that's the team feeling like learning about each other and feeling each other out and like coming together. There was yeah. no point where they like they didn't came do together. that because they're bad guys. Hell, there was more the of that guys. behind the scenes. Like they the, bonded except there for was a, there was a couple, Jared Leto, who yeah. was a crazy person. Apparently, he on set he was very difficult, according to Will Smith. Um, well, he never broke characters. Yeah. So he also decided that it would be appropriate to send um, everyone in the cast um, nudie magazines yeah. with oh. quote unquote used condoms in them. But see, the thing is, that would have been awesome if this whole method acting routine of his had actually given over, given itself over to a coherent and awesome Joker performance. But yeah. this was not and Jared anywhere Leto's near. Not had, a, he's not a bad actor. So was, what the fuck happened? This was nowhere near Heath Ledger or Jack Nicholson. Or, let's be honest, Cesar Romero had a leg up on this guy too. <laughs> I mean, at least when he was cheesy, he was owning it and he was trying to be. Well, yeah, that, that was the point. Like, he was hamming it up with this fake laugh and this fake growl and this, like, just just movements that were just... I, they, they just felt phony. They didn't feel, like, That's... organic. Like, remember that time in, in uh, Batman Dark, uh, The Dark Knight where Heath Ledger is uh, filming that guy, to send, uh, the, the cop, and sends uh-huh. the video to the, the police and Batman is like... Uh, he's giving on tape. He's like, "Look at me! Look at me! Look at me!" Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like where he kind of slips and lets the veneer slip, and he yeah. just goes kind of crazy that way. Mm-hmm. Like that was the kind of crazy that I think was uh, was he that Lita was trying to go for, but in doing so, he kind of reached in the like it for it comically. It like, became so <coughs> far. He, became a he reached for that so hard and tried to push it so hard. That it mm-hmm. just became kind of a, a, a comic of himself. Like he kind of reminds me of like the the Mad Kitten from the Lego Movie. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> essentially, that was the same character. It's like nice, nice, angry, nice, yeah, yeah, kind of thing. Exactly, and he was, so, it was just so Ziggy Stardust, glam rock, grunge, and <laughs> was, the, the music was all over the place too. Like it had like this kind of like duh, you know hardcore gr- like you know Bruce or uh, Christopher Nolan uh, Batman music mixed with. Queen and uh, Eminem yeah. and it just I see. it was a it was a pastiche it was a uh, it was a mosaic that had no overlying theme and it didn't still re- got to be better than the <laughs> it didn't it, the it didn't res- it didn't resolve in anything <laughs> it was a it's it's a mosaic that ended up being a magic eye exactly <laughs> you had to blur your eyes to, to, to get it and come into focus and it never came into focus you, right. sat, you sat there like, shaking the picture going why like, won't you where, reveal where's your, the movie in this why won't you reveal yeah why won't you reveal John, let's remember me? though the Ghostbusters theme had Missy Elliott and um, fucking Fallout Fall Out Boy. Boy don't yeah. get me started so you know don't fucking still get probably a leg up on Ghostbusters in the music department as well yeah. true because at least they didn't put in shitty songs. This is a movie that was some good pixels that just didn't make a sprite that I see. looked like anything. It was just resolved in the shit. In the shit. You mean like a tie dye shirt? What? <laughs> it was like a tie dye shirt, kind of colorful, and it like you had your eye. It, 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 it draws your eye, but we're, you we're mixing metaphors and it's like, now. Guys. And it's like it just looks like it looks like a giant block. But when you try to actually like resolve it, it's like yeah, what is this? It just, and t- tie dyes can work because like a lot of the colors in this were like was very bright. They even had the Joker and Harley in the, in the tub of that chemical, and they were t- like, "Where did those colors come from?" I don't know. Their their makeup was wearing off. I don't know what it was. That's that's the that's the contents of her soul leaking out. Her soul out. Her, leaking out. Her insanity, blue and red, blue and red. Uh, what I what what? Okay, so I'm gonna briefly jump into what I did like about this movie. Okay, and it's very short. Uh, <laughs> All right. the, the costume design and makeup are very good. Very good. Yeah, they did do Deadshot's costume, Harley Quinn's costume, the props, the. Um, the guns, the prosthetics on Killer Croc, all done very, very well. I still hate Joker's costume, but the the, the technical aspects of the movie. I mean, the special effects are very good. The uh, the um, the costuming, the makeup, all very, very good. The uh, the cinematography is very kind of jolting. Although there was some, I mean, there was some 
it wasn't like a like a Michael Bay like you can't tell what's going on on screen, but uh-huh. it kind of went again went back and forth. They didn't want to be because it would do those slow mo cuts too. Okay. There was a lot of slow mo cuts and there was a lot of like frenetic Michael Baying, and it went back and forth. And again, did like no kind of running cinematographic theme that we could we could follow, uh, at least to me. Um, but at least I could I, I could follow it visually for the most part, which is more than I can say for like Transformers three or whatever. I see. Okay. Um, so you mean when it plays on TNT? Yeah. In the next couple of years, you're just going to put it on mute, and you're like, this looks like a pretty film. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what'd you think of uh, Margot Robbie's performance as Harley Quinn? So, like, Strong. Really? Yeah, you liked it? Yeah, I yeah. thought it was probably one of the stronger ones in the ensemble. Well, it was Harley Quinn. I mean, that's, that's the character. That's who she is. Yeah. There was. Um, she didn't stray far from it. No, she didn't, she didn't make. She didn't really make it her own. I think she was kind of just playing the Harley Quinn kind of from the animated series, and. Uh, a little bit from the comic, but... That's cool. But, I mean, she kind of... That was pretty much it. Like, not to sound like a cliched, like, geek girl, but, like, she's one of my favorite characters in a comic series. Like, she, it felt like when they introduced her on, like, the animated series, it was like, wow, like, now there's actually a formidable, cunning female, like, protagonist in a sense. Yeah. I want to give a caveat, then, okay. to her performance, because it All was right. good... But it was still two dimensional. Oh, I see. Yeah, gotcha. it was. Yeah, it was. You know, there wasn't any. It was Harley Quinn, and we only got a little bit, a very little bit of Harley Quinzel, or Harleen Quinzel, like mm-hmm. before she turned uh, to help the Joker. And then, I mean, there was a little bit of like her kind of wrestling with her ethics. That was yeah. the thing that people, they, the, the, the challenge they had in this movie is because like, they're suicide They're supposed to be bad guys, right? So right. it was them wrestling with their ethics, right? right. But if they're bad guys doing horrific things and that's why I liked Diablo and his scene in the bar because he's the only one that really did horrific shit yeah and then really wrestled with it the best I think right because I mean Harley I mean she's like knocks the breaks the window open she's like we're bad guys and she takes the purse and you know but I mean I feel like there wasn't enough like talk about the truly evil person there who was Amanda Waller yeah like yeah. out of all Amanda of them she, Waller. Was, she <clears throat> was just like okay Deadshot kills people for money. Yeah. But Amanda Waller is this faceless government goon. And I I, I, I kind of liked her character in that way. Like, there's a part where they're, like, trying to exfiltrate from their secret base on top of a building. And then she's all like, get rid of everything. Wipe us clean. And yeah. then when that's done, she, like, shoots her, uh, her, empl- the, yeah. her employees her in the head. Like, they just, like, kills them all. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty cold. And that's like something a little bit more scary about that. Even Deadshot like said having... that was cold. Yeah, what's that? Even Deadshot said that was, that was, yeah, that was right. really cold. Yeah, right. And I was, I was thinking to myself, how could that character be more interesting? Like, mm-hmm. it would be more interesting because she's obviously someone who plays with the big boys. Yeah. Right. Right? So I would imagine she would have like a – it would be more interesting if she played up the fact that she doesn't give a fuck about what anyone else thinks. And she has like – I thought it would be interesting if she would had instead of just playing this the the stereotypical strong woman. Yeah. It would have been an interesting character choice if she was like just had a filthy mouth and just talked down to all the men around her. Like just be like yeah. I can't believe this stupid cunt over here, this fucking piece of shit or whatever. <laughs> what, what are they it would be an interesting thing. But right? she is a strong woman, and I think it's terrifying that she never has to do that. Amanda Waller, another one of my favorite female characters, she's just so goddamn intimidating because she's talking down to these super villains, and like there's like no necessarily no background like on why she's doing it. So you just get the sense of like she is a fucking terrifying human being yeah. because she feels that she's d- able to do that and is capable and doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. I mean, and she is, and then does that, does that make her more evil? Because Maybe she should she have been part have, of the Suicide Squad. <laughs> <laughs> she seems to have handed herself over to that, whereas some of the other people in the, he was the squad are wrestling with that. Like, uh, uh, dead shots, like, well, I don't kill women and children. Right. And uh, my price is my daughter's safety and her yeah. future, right? So, I mean, he's he kills people, right? So he's bad, right? He kills people, but... On the scale of bad they're working with in here, it's kind of, it's kind of. It's kind of um, I would say her character is even worse than his. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of relative because then, and then you have, then you have um, uh, uh, Diablo who 
was bad and but was he, he killed his his wife and daughter but it was an accident right right because she was trying to get him to be good because he was doing gangster shit yeah and then so she's like stop doing gangster shit and they had the, the confrontation and he got all upset and then accidentally burned his house down with his wife and kids inside mm-hmm. and then um you got killer croc who just kills people but he's like an he's like an animal who right. watches bet and like and he's BLTs and he's, yeah, he's, he's BLTs, BLTs and drinks and drinks <laughs> and drinks like canned beer. God, such a stereotype. God, oh wow. my god, so bad. I'm um, on a BLT now though. Boomerang man, like what? Like he his 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 abilities were to like throw his blades. They were like a boomerang. Like it, it seems like the worst that super was villain, the worst member ever. Of the team. He's like, <laughs> oh, and the, you know who we totally forgot about that they, they signed on was that rope climbing guy who was oh, yeah. who was in there for like 15 uh, minutes before they got killed. He, he, I don't know, Skrillex, Indian Skrillex. Yeah, he, <laughs> uh, he was uh, he was like a professional like in, in, entry and exit man was uh, is there is what he was supposed to be uh-huh. into the team. Criss Cross right? was his name or something. I can't remember. Was his I name mean. really Criss Cross? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> the fuck is it? Did he I, wear his overalls backwards? Or well, the best it, part was like when I saw him on us, screen, well, I was like, this guy's immediately gonna. Die. Die. Will he make us jump, jump? Yeah, exactly. Chris Cross will make you jump, jump. Um, but uh, he was the one. He was the red shirt that went in with them, and he was the one who they had everything uh, bombs implanted in their necks that would blow their heads off. They tried to escape, and he's the right. one that uh, got. He was the one who was made example and of it, the rest of the team. It, it should be noted that he's a, he was like a Native American looking dude. Oh and, yeah, like, oh, and the fact that he was like. He was trying to go Slip. off the reservation, his, so the white man like comes back and like reasserts his control. His name is Slipknot. Slipknot. So not not far off from Skrillex there, just <laughs> one band over, one dude over. But I mean, did did anyone catch that? It was just a very very subtle backhanded thing to let remind like Native Americans that the white man is in control. Yeah, it's uh exactly, and it was and it actually was a black woman in control eventually. Yeah. Well. Right. Yeah. But and eventually he's the one that gives up the control though. Uh, Rick Flag says after that bar scene, he's like, "Okay, you know what? I don't care anymore. I'm doing this to get my my lady back. You can uh-huh. help me if you want. If not, you're just go. Yeah, just you're free." Um, <laughs> when he, he when he was like that, and then the guy was like, "Like I'm gonna go now." He's just like, "Wait, you're not supposed to go." Yeah, <laughs> <supposed to go. laughs> this was a, a dramatic gesture. Um, and uh, <laughs> Harley tries to escape with the Joker, and they welcome her back in pretty quick. Okay. Yeah, like I thought, I thought they should have felt more betrayed. Right. Yeah. She's like, uh, she's like, oh no, we'll get out of this together. Like first chance we 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 have, we'll get out of this. And then, uh-huh. uh, Joker only disarms the bomb in her neck, and so she's free to go. And he flies a chopper in to rescue her out of the city's wreckage or whatever. Well, that yeah. that part made sense in his character because he wouldn't care about anyone else. No, but I mean, she she felt no loyalty to his people. I see. She was cool enough to leave them. That was a lot of forgettable scenes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it seems like for as much as they showed us in two and a half hours, there was a lot that I don't remember. Yeah. Oh my god, right? Yeah. So like, <laughs> I feel like everything you needed to know about this film was in the trailer. Exactly. And again, it's a poor job of editing. There's a lot of fluff in this movie. There's That's a, lot a shame. Of, and it's in, it says less is more. Like, you, look, you gave us a whole bunch more, and then, and then look how little we remember. Look how little we care. Yeah. Um, the... Uh, but yeah, the whole like I think the strongest parts were Margot Robbie's portrayal of Harley Quinn, even though it was, like you said, uh, Ivan two dimensional. Um, I think uh, Diablo for some reason was my favorite character out of this, one. even though he was like as stereotypical Mexican gangsters you come and pretty much offensive to uh-huh. Mexicans. Um, the way he portrayed his character, like he was he was, he felt like the the realest character. That's cool. Will I couldn't see past Will Smith being Will Smith. Like it was just. Agent J being Agent J being um, uh, what's his name and iRobot being what's his name in yeah, exactly it's the being same Will Smith, the I French felt, Prince of Bel Air yeah. yeah I felt terrible because <laughs> as soon as they announced him being cast as Deadshot I thought. This is a story all about. Oh, him. It's like what's Will Smith gonna shoot in this? Like it's like it's Will Smith. Like oh, what kind of gun is Will Smith gonna have in this movie? It's like in in Agent or in a in a. Men in Black's like, oh, he's got a neuralizer and a laser gun. Yeah. And this one, he's got a whole bunch of fancy guns. In uh, iRobot, he's got a robot. It's like, what what kind of gimmick does uh, Will Smith have to be Will Smith this but time? But since this is like real uh, gritty Will Smith, he, he we get to hear him uh, cuss once Yeah, in the whole film. Just once. Uh, well, did he? Yeah, PG-13 like, rating. 
bitch. Bitch. That's it. And then, well, he doesn't like to curse, if I remember correctly. Oh, is he, that he it? likes to keep his his you know more cleaner oh, that's persona. Right. Yeah. Like, do you ever see that Family Guy joke where they like, oh, yeah, where this he's is even rapping. cleaner than Will Smith's rap. He's like, I'm gonna go. Uh, Pay my child support. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you know, I'm going to go make a lot of money and show a lot of bling, but then I'm going to do my taxes. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a very, very squeaky clean. Yeah, this, this, this movie felt like cleansed. Like it was, like it was. Oh uh, my God, right? It felt cleaned up like it was made to be. It's it, sterile. It was sterile. Very, yeah, there you well, go. Well, wasn't it Sterilized. originally supposed to have an R rating? I, well, it, it, should have had, it should have had an R rating with less people in it. And it would have been a way better movie. Okay. Like Deadpool. Deadpool. Oh, three Deadpool three characters are rating fantastic, right? Yeah. Yeah. Three major characters. You had you had um you had a Deadpool and Negasonic super teenage ninja person. <laughs> and, and, and Colossus, right? And they had yeah. they had a nice like um character arcs for each one of them. Yeah. And they each played their they each had their they had the moments, the other scenes. They yeah. each kind of played off each other in like a little, a little and triangle. I thought foil. Vanessa was sussed out pretty well. Yeah. Like exa- we didn't know a ton about her, but like we knew enough as to why she was relevant to the story. Yeah. yeah. It should have been Diablo, it should have been Deadshot, it should have been Harley. With Even maybe, if there's more people it can work. We yeah, we have we saw, fantastic war films. We saw that with uh with um Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. And um, to a lesser, very lesser degree, Fantastic Four. I don't, I'm not sure, I'm quite sure if I like I, Fantastic Four, I, the original couple, better oh, than this one. Because no. the, the, the latest one was an absolute abomination. But, uh, you know, the, the ensemble movie can be done very well if we are shown and not told. Right. And exactly. that we are, sh- like- what we're shown matters. Yeah. And, it, and it's not fluff. Right. And I think that's. I think we keep coming back to this uh, 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 a through line through most of our uh, disappointing film podcasts is that we need to be shown not told and that's generally how you t- do good fiction yeah exactly uh-huh. um, for sure it's just I feel like I don't know what went on in behind the scenes to the writing of this but I feel like that again there was probably studio pressure to right exposition a whole bunch of stuff and mm-hmm. move things forward in a in a overarching uh, series movies that they're trying to get out as quickly as possible to play catch up to Marvel yeah. when they would make way more money and make way better movies and sell more DVDs and Blu-rays if they would just uh, slow things down a bit and pay attention to their characters yeah. instead of trying to pay attention to plot to catch up to a grandstanding final movie that is way out in front, way out in the future, that was probably, if they keep doing things this way, going to suck the worst out of all of them. Oh, but yeah, what if sure. this is their ultimate marketing plan? I just had a thought. Okay. Like, release... Of putting out <laughs> shitty movies? Right, right. Release, like, a beta version in theaters so people get really pissed off, and then they re- release, like, extended cuts like BVS. And then the people go and buy that, and it's like, oh, this is so much better than the, the $12 that I spent to give them, like, several hundred million dollars. <laughs> but you would make more money... If more people went to the movies and, and, then, also, and then also, but let's Blu-ray. let's think of like a uh, Hollywood executive, okay, in which that nothing makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I need I need my hundred million dollar return they can, they, right they, yeah, now. Yeah, because they can only see as far as the next quarter, and that's another thing is like these studios are so concerned with being beholden to their stockholders for profits at the end of the quarter. Yeah, they don't go because like um, Marvel had Civil War; they had their big like multi-character action set piece and right. so then uh dc rushes out batman versus superman when in all in all logic they should have just started with the batman film and then had wonder woman yeah. and then had flash and yeah. whatever instead of trying to shoehorn everything in because in this film we do get glimpses of the justice league right. uh, flash captures um uh, boomerang we get batman capturing uh harley quinn and then at the very end the stinger is uh, spoilers. Um, Bruce Wayne meeting with Amanda Waller, getting information on her metahuman list, which has Flash and Wonder, or Flash and uh, Aquaman okay. on it, mm-hmm. so he can start putting together his team. And one of the lines is, "He's like, she's like, she's like, you should cap off this, this, uh, this team you've got going. We'll, you know, or I have, I, fr- I have friends that w- you know we can do this for. You know, they'll handle it for you. Yeah, like not so subtly, you know, but." Uh, 
And I, she, wa- then, I, wa- then she, I, I went into this wanting to like the movie, man. Uh-huh. I wanted, I wanted, to, to, I wanted, wanted to. to like, I wanted to be like, yeah, like I was wrong and I'm going to like eat my words and I'll go and see the film again. I'll gladly go and pay the $16 to see an IMAX. But it was just, it just, it just wasn't, wasn't good. Good. And now we get, we get Smug Wan where he was right. This yes. is the, the, the saddest sounding right person in the world. Juan, Juan's you know always, right about Juan's me. always saddest when he's right because oh. he, he's, he's right frequently and he's got good instincts on these things. I, I gotta say the other issue that I think is happening with movie studios is they are terrified of the R rating because they think like kids won't go in and see their movies. But look, because, look how well it did for Deadpool. Yeah, but like look at Deadpool. It did so well. Also... They're gonna, kids are going to sneak into your fucking movie Movies, anyway well, if it's good enough. And look at this way. If the parents like the movie, if they go see an R movie and they like it, and it's like, oh, this is a great comic movie, they'll take their kids to see it anyway. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then buy the Blu-ray. And, and buy the Blu-ray stuff. So you're going to make the money. And supervise their kids while they're watching. Exactly. They're not thinking, they're not thinking like, oh, then you make double the money because the, the parents will go see it in the theater. And they're like, oh, that's great. That wasn't so bad. I'll take my kid to see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And, and they just don't think like that. They just think like, okay, how much money can we get out of the viewer the first time because we want to extract as much as soon as possible. Yeah, it's... and now the, um, uh, China has decided not to release this. They're going to miss really? the Chinese market on this one. Oh wow! Because it was so bad, and there was so much controversy going into ahead of it. Wait, what kind of tr- controversy specifically? Oh, the, the, the whole the whole Rotten Tomatoes thing, and then um, they uh, they only only allow like a certain number of movies from America to be released in China uh-huh. every year. Uh, and I guess okay. this is just such so badly received here that they decided to screw that. <laughs> wow, we're not gonna a... we're not gonna do it. I wonder if they'll release the Great Wall. One of the trailers was for no. the Great Wall with Matt I Damon. I doubt it. Uh, I highly doubt it. That's another. Of course they will because it's a Chinese. It's a domestically made film. Is it? Yeah. So they can. The they can even, and they will. Even though Matt Damon's you know hashtag whitewashed uh, Hollywood, they're yeah. They're, Skipping over an an Asian actor that could have done the the lead role for the, Matt Damon. They, the director had to come out and say, "Oh, he's not a main character, but by the way, he's just he's he's one of five in a in a, in a team." Yeah. This is a Chinese guy, by the way, so I'm not gonna do, <laughs> I'm not gonna go <laughs> not all, gonna do the full <laughs> and accent. But no, he's like he had to explain that Matt Damon isn't a main character. You could have fucking fooled us. Yeah. You could have just not had him on See, the poster. See, he, he had him on the... On, he, he was the only character in the trailer that was, like, do the whole trailer. Yeah. <laughs> but, but then again, I've, I've just been informed that apparently China loves Matt Damon. What? Really? So... Well, I mean, they, had, they, they, they brought the Martian over there, and a lot of that Martian movie was, was played, uh, played China big time. Oh, Okay. Like uh, the they, the the Chinese saved the day in the movie. They gave them the second launch vehicle no to, to be able to go. You've seen it? Oh, I've seen the Martian. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Remember they they gave them the the the, the rocket when the first oh one right 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 because the Got Americans it. do the rush job, which apparently is the whole point of this cast is like the rush job. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Americans are good at doing that. And so, so who knows? Maybe the the Great Wall is going to be highly well received. Maybe. Um, I mean, one of the, one of the, the trailers. Uh, we don't want to talk about the trailers of the movie, but the, they had Assassin's Creed trailer, full new, full new trailer with oh, Michael Fassbender. Yeah. That looks really good. Does it? Except it for ex- except for the Kanye <clears throat> soundtrack. Ah. Uh, it looks really good. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think Assassin's Creed and then Kanye. <laughs> no, no. Oh, that one looks really good. So check that out. But okay. um, you know what, you guys. Uh, I gotta like on a ten. I gotta give this like a three. <laughs> wow, <laughs> it's, that bad? it's pretty bad. It's like, shit. There was a, there was a couple good lines. There like in the stinger, they the Amanda Waller tells Bruce Wayne like, "Hey, she's like, you look tired. You should stop working nights." To Bruce Wayne, I thought that was kind of uh-huh. there was a couple good clever lines in there. Like, yeah. but for the most part, the writing was shallow Wait, and expository. So she knew Bruce Wayne was Batman. No, she no, just yeah. th- she just thinks that Bruce Wayne's tired from working so hard. Oh. Yeah. Then yeah. why is he, she giving him? Or maybe maybe subtly she does know. Maybe because no. she has. Well, well think of... about it. Like, why would she be giving him metahuman files? Because Bruce Wayne is a billionaire and he knows. And he, he has, wants. He has, yeah, he has exactly. defense, <laughs> and he has defense contracts and stuff like that. They didn't really elucidate on that in this thing. Oh, is there something you want, Bruce Wayne? Sure. <laughs> yeah, that makes no sense for like a, a shadowy G woman to just all of a sudden hand over state secrets. Yeah, that is kind of weird. Um. Uh, ben Affleck's brief appearance as Batman in this was actually pretty good. Yeah. It was, oh, yeah, was, that's right. It was actually pretty good. It was Batman printing. He, he was in the Batmobile. He he. Uh, he didn't kill anybody. He didn't kill anybody. He he flew he flew out of Batmobile and did his little uh, um, bat hook swing. Into he actually the, saved people. In the water, saved Harley Quinn. Oh. With his little uh, bat scuba device, yeah. and then 
uh, comes that back out. That scuba device. Well, it, no, he has a little, his little breathing mask. Like, oh. In that scene where, like, he, does breather. he kiss her or does she kiss him? Like, when like when he's, like, putting her in, in the Batmobile and then all of a sudden, like... Oh, yeah, when he gives her mouth to mouth. It looks like he kind of actually does go in for a kiss. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I couldn't tell. It was kind of left up to our imagination. Huh. It was but, weird. Uh, uh, it was funny because she like she's underwater and she she's pretending to play dead underwater and then she lunges at him with a knife underwater and he just punches her underwater and knocks her out and then carries her out of the Whoa. water. Someone yeah. told me that Ben Affleck wasn't in even in this movie and I was like, oh, that's too bad. No, and he I is. was like, I went into this movie, I was like, being disappointed is like now we don't even have Ben Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> he totally was, and then when the Enchantress was like uh, trying to, to foil the, all the all the Suicide Squad by putting false uh, like idyllic visions in their head, yeah. Uh, Deadshots was to kill Batman, and so he, he shoots Batman and then and then pulls his cowl off, and we see like uh, Bruce Wayne just lying there. How would he know that it's Bruce Wayne? Exactly, right? That's exactly. Very that weird. was something that didn't that didn't didn't work for me. Well, like, you you gave it what a three. I, I think I think I'm with you. I think that I could have gone my entire life without watching this film, yeah. and I would have not this, missed out on anything. This is definitely one you want to wait till you, till it comes out on demand for free. Like you can watch it on demand for free on your network. So does that mean? Like, yes, because you can fast forward through it. Yeah, yeah. There's so a lot you mean, can fast forward through. So does this mean that uh, Kevin Smith's like? Ability to judge what's a good movie is totally off now. He said this did, did DC proud, and I have to to flatly disagree. It's so, but I think what happened because, because he's in DC's pocketbook. Maybe oh, he wants. To, maybe he's trying to stay in their good graces because he knows how much influence he wields with the nerd crowd. Right. That yeah. if he says it's bad, then DC will never hire him to write Superman. Right. Which is what right. he wants to do. Especially since like he literally named his daughter Harley after Harley Quinn. Yeah, yeah. and or or Batman. The, the, they won't let him in if he keeps if he shits on what DC does. That's true. So but that's, he's, that's he's so close with Benny Boy. That's politics right there for you. I know, right? Um, so uh, what about you, Ivan? A number? You want to assign a numerical value to this? Uh, yes. Two point angry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's about the absolute value of Sucky 3 for me. Um, well, is there anything else you guys want to say about this that, that pissed you off, that confused you? No, you, I, you I didn't have better. to pay for these tickets, right? Um, I paid for – I got two free ones. You got two free ones. So I paid for How one of them. How did you get two free ones? Uh, Comic-Con. Oh, shit. So, yeah. I mean, wow. Yeah. I, so yeah. at least I didn't pay for most of it. Holy cow. Yeah. I mean, Fuck. please save your money yeah. for the love of God. Yeah. In fact, go one step further. Please pirate this movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, don't, don't pirate. I mean, they, they spent... They spent <laughs> no, no, please. Go, go find an alternative to the Pirate Bay and go, go ahead. Go um, ahead. What I would say is... Some is, men just want to watch the world burn. Seriously. And I just want to watch this movie burn. Here, here's what you do. If you haven't seen Batman vs. Superman or this movie, save your money. The tickets, you, or the money you would have spent on both those tickets and go buy the Ultimate Edition on DVD of Batman vs. <laughs> well Superman. said. Well and said. Th- that's the best, you're, that's the, the best value you're going to extract out of the money you would have spent on any of these movies. There you go. That's, the, that's, my, rec- that's my recommendation. Um, so we... Uh, wow. Wow. Well, you know, that we're, we here at Nerdfunnel, we like taking bullets for you guys. That's what we, we do. So we, we sh- we've, I think, feel like we've shielded you. I can, I, I can, le- I can leave this day going, going home feeling we, like, well. We took the bullet for you. I got to go get, buy this song for IMAX because I got that free ticket for Conan that I'm gifting to Ryan. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Eh, it's, oh, a, it's a good. You should go and It's a good re <laughs> Also, I want to, uh, before we end here tonight, um, I want to do a uh, start a, a recurring shout-out to our friends at GamerCon, uh, oh. who uh, spent a little time hyping us on their Facebook page. That's so, coming up, isn't it? Uh, well, they're GamerCon, they do conventions. So they were at Comic-Con. They do uh, mm, okay. uh, gaming conventions at Comic-Con. They're going to be at NerdCon in Escondido, California Ooh. at the end of the month on the 28th, 29th, 30th. Are I think. we going to be there? Um, I've, got my, uh, I've got a request in for a media pass. Ooh, so I'm still oh, waiting to hear back on that. Okay. I'm going to call them tomorrow cool. and see what that's about. Uh, but yeah, GamerCon, check them out. Uh, G-A-M-3-E-R. Uh, con, Isn't gamer. it just 3-R? Yeah, not 3-E-R. G-A-M-3-R. G-A-M-3. It's, it's lead speak. Yeah, yeah. lead speak. I'm, I'm putting E's in where I want to want to Gamir. feel them. Gamir. Um, Gamir. G-A-M-3-R-C-O-N. GamerCon. There you go. And if any of our um, listeners, if we're going to NerdCon, 
Uh, uh, they're they're gonna be uh, they're gonna be uh, doing sp- uh, Gamer Bowl next week. Uh, let me just uh, pull up the uh, uh, info on that real quick here. They're gonna be doing GamerCon uh, next week. Uh-huh. Uh Let's see schedule. Um, let's see there. Okay, well they had their schedule for Comic Con that was up. So they did like uh, retro gaming. They have they arrange like gaming tournament stuff. They were at Comic Con. They'll be doing that at NerdCon too. Um, they'll be uh, let's see. Uh, well, they'll definitely be at NerdCon in Escondido, California, at the end of the month. Awesome. Um, and if for any if we go, any of our listeners who are attending can find us there too. Yes, uh, they will. Uh, let's see. Um, we can find them uh, at GamerCon. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Um, you can find them in. Uh, well, they have lots of ads on the UT, um, and you can find them on Facebook, GamerCon on Facebook, uh, Facebook.com/slash/gam3er, and okay. hit them up on. Uh, so there is an E. There is no no. It's G A M. Three G A M no, there's no. One. I keep putting it in there. G A M three R. God, G A M three R con. G A M three R. Yeah. Okay. By the way, have we heard back from uh, Kamikaze yet? Uh, Kamikaze. Uh, I'm still waiting on that too. Gotcha. Okay. okay. So we might be there. Come find us at. Uh... Oh, well, I'm going either way. If we get a media pass. Yeah, I'm same. Going. Cause yeah. it's like around my birthday, and I don't do shit for my birthday. Anymore. It's around Halloween, and I want an excuse to go dress up and be fancy. And yeah. I'm so also, fancy. Yeah, exactly. My birthday's on Halloween. So. Yeah. You don't. You don't go and like steal kid. If you have any candy. If, <laughs> if you have any, in, uh, you, you can find them on uh, gam 3 rcon dot com. That's you did it. GAM3RCON.com. Uh, you can email them at info at ga- GAM3RCON.com. You're uh, so proud of it now. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, super, I'm super stoked about this. It's like a kid learning to whistle. Once he finally gets it down, <laughs> he does it all the time. Uh, they are on Twitter uh, at GAM3RCONSD. Uh, uh, capital G A M 3 R. Capital C O N, lowercase S D. Uh, I don't think you need that. Oh my god! I'm just. Uh, it's just really fun. This is this is just funny to you guys. Oh, I'm sorry. Their Facebook is uh, facebookcom slash gam 3 con S D. Sorry. Gamercon S D. Um, they got some funny, hilarious posts. I'm following them. Uh, oh, they're cool. really cool. They put up good pictures. Awesome memes. All stuff for uh, nerds and gamers, both on the table and on the screen. So, so check it out. Um, and uh, until next time, you've been nerd funneled. Watch less Suicide, Suicide Squad. Squad.